Good day and welcome everybody to this press conference on the economic perspectives for Argentina. My name is Peter Van Ham. I am the US media lead for the World Economic Forum and I'll be happy uh, to be joined today by two speakers, very high profile speakers from Argentina. Uh, Mr. Nicolas Dujovne, the Minister of the Treasury of Argentina. Welcome. Thanks. And uh, Guido Santleris, I hope I said that correct. Um, uh, Governor Santleris of the Central Bank of Argentina. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Um, we will conduct this uh, press conference in English, but if you have questions in Spanish, we'll be happy uh, to take them. Bienvenidos a todos también los que ven uh, en línea desde Argentina y uh, Latinoamérica y todo el mundo en esta conferencia de prensa. So today we'll be speaking about the economic perspectives for Argentina, 2019, of course, the year that we're in, 2020 and beyond. And we will start, of course, with a uh, look back at uh, the situation uh, of today. We had an update, I believe, two days ago uh, from the IMF about the global economic outlook and some uh, perspectives from uh, international organizations. Uh, but of course, we can hear it firsthand here from the uh, minister. So I want to start with you. Uh, Minister Dujovne, uh, could you, in your introductory remarks, perhaps tell us where we are in Argentina and what your plans are for the uh, coming years? Well, thank you very much and uh, good uh, afternoon to, to everyone. Uh, when President Macri took office in December 2015, Argentina launched a very comprehensive program of reforms. Basically, uh, the new administration uh, seeked to uh, uh, reintegrate Argentina with the rest of the world to achieve fiscal solvency, uh, to reinstate the rule of law in Argentina, and to rebuild the infrastructure that was depleted in the previous years. So that was the uh, very broad economic program that Argentina put in place and that was uh, functioning very well. As you may know, in 2018, Argentina suffered a series of shocks, basically the rever reversal in, in capital flows to emerging markets uh, that affected us uh, specifically because Argentina was an economy that still didn't finish to correct the inherited imbalances received from the previous administration, plus the most important drought of the last 50 years that took an important toll in terms of our exports and, and growth. Uh, the message that I would like to convey to you today is that uh, the shocks that we suffered in 2018 reinforce the commitment of uh, our government towards reforms. So we decided to accelerate uh, the path uh, of conversions towards fiscal equilibrium. And that's why we announced that Argentina will reach primary equilibrium in 2019. We received the support of the international community uh, channeled uh, through the multilaterals and especially uh, by the IMF that provided uh, a program of uh, $57 billion to Argentina. And also the central bank, the governor will speak about that in, in some minutes, launched a new uh, uh, monetary rule, very simple, very easy to understand and to monitor uh, by the private sector. So um, with this acceleration of the reforms, uh, with the new rule in terms of the monetary policy by the central bank, we are seeing a stabilization uh, of the economy. Uh, inflation is uh, decelerating, and um, uh, all the variables are stabilizing. And uh, we think that uh, we are uh, coming out of, of, of this uh, episode of 2018 um, stronger uh, than we enter in, in, into this uh, these uh, problems because uh, Argentina is solving its problems uh, using uh, the normal tools, uh, let's say fortifying the fiscal position, uh, letting the peso to move, and not resorting to uh, the methods that Argentina used in the past. So with this, uh, we think that we are regaining the ability to grow. Uh, still, we have a, a year in 2019 in which uh, growth uh, will not be you know, uh, the, the, uh, very fast, but uh, we are generating the conditions for Argentina to regain a path of sustained growth uh, and to build an economy that can uh, achieve uh, uh, 
uh, a sustainable growth in, in the future. Thank you. And, and indeed, uh, also the IMF uh, uh, informed us on, on Monday that they expect uh, Argentina to return to growth in 2020. Is that also the expectation of the, uh, and the ambition of the uh, Argentinian government? Yes, of course. Uh, we think that uh, for the year 2020 as a whole, Argentina will, will grow. Um, and uh, that's the result of uh, the acceleration of, of the uh, reforms uh, that we uh, implemented in, in the last few months. Thank you. Um, and then maybe we turn now to uh, Governor Santaleris uh, of the Central Bank of Argentina. Of course, uh, as well, an uh, eventful year in 2018 for the Central Bank. What are the expectations for 2019? Yes, it's been a, a, little, a little bit more than three months since we started implementing a new monetary regime uh, where the central bank targets a monetary aggregate, a monetary base. Uh, the aim is to keep it constant until mid-June of this year. Uh, and in these first three months, the central bank overachieved in every single month in terms of this objective. Uh, of course, uh, inflation in Argentina was very high last year. Uh, and it's been very high for, for many years now. And lowering inflation is the biggest challenge that the central bank faces. Uh, however, we understand very well that lowering inflation to one digit, that's our final target, uh, it's not something that can be achieved in a year. It's something that takes time, but we are working uh, to achieve it. And we are, I think, uh, giving solid steps in that direction. Uh, thank you very much for those uh, remarks, and indeed um, uh, that goal is, is noted uh, um, of one-digit uh, um, inflation to achieve that over time, over the long run. Uh, can you say anything about what you believe is a, is a, is a potential uh, path uh, in terms of how many years it takes uh, to, to, to take, undertake such reforms or su such uh, inflation uh, adjustments? In, in this regime, we focus on lowering inflation year after year. Uh, but we don't give, the central bank doesn't give forecasts in terms of what it thinks inflation is going to be uh, each year. The key is to make sure that every year is inflation is lower than the previous year. Great. Thank you very much. And before we turn to questions, I, I perhaps want to ask one more question to, um, to Minister Duchovny. Uh, of course, uh, Argentina is also part of the global economy, uh, has been uh, part of the global economy for a very long time, uh, integrated uh, first more and then less into the uh, global economy, and now again more. Um, now, there are also worries for uh, the global economy uh, going forward and, and questions being asked here, uh, are we heading again towards a recession? Are we heading towards a, um, a slowdown of growth globally? Um, do you plan for such, for such events and how can you uh, react to that and make sure that you can keep on track uh, in Argentina? Well, yes, um, of course, uh, we, we, we track what is going on in, in, in the world economy. And uh, we, we know that there is some uh, deceleration in growth uh, 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 in the world economy. But still, we are seeing solid rates of, of growth uh, in, in, in the world. Uh, and for Argentina, it's very relevant also what happens with Brazil. Brazil is expected to grow uh, this year above 2%. Uh, and that is uh, a novelty uh, after many years of recession and being Brazil the most important trading partner for Argentina, that's something that will counterbalance uh, in a big portion the deceleration that we can see in the rest of the world. Yeah, and so an important uh, positive signal from within the region that indeed may uh, positively impact uh, the growth story of Argentina. Of course. Um, then I want to give the chance now to the journalists in the room uh, if they have any questions for either Minister Duchovny or Governor Santleris, uh, you may let us know. Please. And if you could uh, take the microphone, perhaps stand up and uh, state uh, your affiliation and then the question. Sure. Uh, for Governor Sandlaris, uh, Eric Martin with Bloomberg News. The monetary policies of the central bank have helped to stabilize the peso after months of volatility. Why do you think that markets have regained faith in the central bank? Uh, and also, the currency band was recently tested in a way many didn't expect with the peso falling below the floor of the currency band. Uh, right now, uh, you can only buy 50 million a day. Uh, will you, excuse me, will you increase that amount if the peso goes below the band again? Thank you. Thank you. I think that 
uh, one element that has been key uh, in terms of achieving this uh, stabilization uh, of the effects has been that the whole economic program was consistent and coordinated. No, it was crucial for the central bank to be able to achieve this zero growth in the monetary base, for example, that the central bank doesn't make any transfers to the treasury anymore. Uh, that was a problem in the past. But now the treasury is converging to a balanced budget this year. So it doesn't need the central bank uh, to make transfers, and, and transfers stop since the middle of last year already. I think that an element that helped us regain confidence, and we designed it in that way, was that by targeting the monetary base, we are targeting an aggregate, a monetary aggregate, that people can check every day. Every day we release the number of what the monetary base is, so investors, uh, the public in general, can check whether the central bank is doing what it promised it was going to do. And it's been three months and a half, and we, as I mentioned, we overachieved in every single month. So I think that that helped uh, start regaining the confidence in the central bank and in the currency. However, I think that this is a long process. Uh, confidence is something that breaks easily, and it takes a long time to really regain it. I think we are, we, we are taking uh, sound steps on that direction, but there is still a long way to go. Regarding the effects, as you correctly mentioned, uh, the central bank, together with the monetary rule, announced that uh, there will be a no intervention zone in the FX uh, within certain limits of the FX so that the FX could float and we had the benefits of having a flexible exchange rate in order to absorb the shocks that the economy can have. But at the same time, given that the exchange rate plays a very important role uh, in the Argentine economy, we wanted to uh, give some reassurance in terms of there would be some levels where the central bank would intervene. The exchange rate appreciated more than 10% against the US dollar in these three months. And as you correctly mentioned, uh, two eyes, one uh, a week and a half ago, and also yesterday, it went through the lower end of the no intervention zone. And there, the central bank bought uh, international reserves and uh, injected pesos in the economy. Uh, we did so because uh, we see that appreciation as a sign that the appetite for peso assets is coming back and the demand for money uh, is starting to uh, increase for very, from very low levels. Uh, going forward, uh, it is a decision of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank that is going to be announced at the end of the month to establish the precise amount that the Central Bank will be willing to uh, purchase every day if the exchange rate remains below the uh, no intervention zone. At this stage, it's $50 million per day. We thought that that was prudent, was cautious. Uh, we didn't want to inject too many pesos uh, too fast. But uh, at the end of the month, probably the COPOM will analyze whether it's necessary to increase that amount or not. Sorry, with the microphone, please. So, uh, yeah. not, not possible to predict at this point, or if you have a personal preference as to what kind of a policy remedy would, would result from uh, the possible need to increase it. I mean, to be able to forecast that. No, it's, it's, it's something that the Monetary Policy Committee will decide. OK. Many thanks. Um, uh, other questions? And we'll wait for the microphone. Uh, when you get the microphone, please state your name and affiliation, and then ask the question, please. Thanks for giving me this chance. I'm with Phoenix. I'm from Beijing, China. Um, so China is an important trading partner with Argentina. So do you expect more Chinese investment in this year? And what kind of prefer preferential policy would Argentina government offer to Chinese business? In the, in the kind of uh, preferential... Preferential all, policies. Lost, uh, yeah. Just one second before we continue. Um, we'll wait until the sound is back in the meanwhile. Um, but I think you're, yeah, and we are back. Uh, so the question about investments from China and what policies you implement uh, to uh, accommodate that. Well, um, China is a very important trading partner uh, for Argentina. Uh, a big portion of uh, our exports, especially on the agricultural side, 
are uh, directed to China. On the other side, Argentina is a very big importer of uh, Chinese uh, Finnish, uh, Finnish goods. So the uh, commercial relationship is, is very big and, and very solid. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, direct investment from China in Argentina. And uh, these uh, investments are based on the opportunities that our economy is offering to all the investors uh, in the world. Uh, so many Chinese companies are participating in our PPP uh, programs or are investing in, in infrastructure, in, in mining. Um, but uh, the view of the Argentinian government is that we are uh, setting uh, a common field, a common ground for all investors to come to invest to Argentina by providing uh, a, an environment that is attractive for investment um, without giving special concessions uh, to uh, uh, the different type of investors. It's, uh, it's uh, a common ground for everyone uh, and uh, China is taking a good opportunity of the uh, chances that Argentina is providing to all the investors to come to Argentina uh, to, to invest. Thank you so much. Uh, any other questions from the audience? Um, I want to perhaps, uh, yeah, a question over here. I'll uh, bring the microphone. Go ahead. Hello, thank you. I, I would like to have some more figures. Uh, what is your estimate for economic growth last year and uh, the prospects for this year? Yes, please? and just uh, the name and the affiliation, please. It's Kunz from Estado de São Paulo. From okay, Perfect. so from uh, yeah. thank you very much. So, any uh, comments about the economic uh, growth uh, forecasts or uh, expectations from last year? And, and, and the last figures, the last estimates for growth and for uh, inflation also. Well, um, we still didn't uh, release uh, the figures for the fourth quarter uh, of Argentina. Uh, still, the, the numbers weren't published. Uh, Argentina faced a contraction of the GDP last year. Uh, that will be around 2%, but we, we still don't have uh, the exact numbers. Um, and uh, for uh, 2019, uh, well, Argentina makes an official forecast uh, for its GDP when we uh, send our budget bill to the Congress uh, every uh, September 15th. So our, our last projection for this year is of a contraction of a minus uh, half percent for the GDP. Um, that especially is based on the negative carryover that is left in uh, 2018 into 2019 because uh, the contraction of the GDP that occurred in Argentina last year happened mostly in the second half of the year. So basically the contraction that uh, we are expecting for this year uh, with the last figures that we projected is uh, based on the negative carryover that 2018 left into this year. Thank you. And uh, do you have any uh, latest figures from the central bank uh, uh, about uh, inflation or interest? Uh, well, the last data for December was published already, and that's the uh, close the year 2018 with an inflation that was 47.6 percent. As I mentioned, uh, it's very high, uh, and we are working towards lowering it. Thank you so much. Any further questions from the audience over there? We'll bring the microphone. Sorry, Mark, Mark Bendai from Reuters for the Central Bank Governor. Just a clarification. So um, the Monetary Policy Committee will be considering the intervention limits in the coming weeks. Is there a particular meeting where you'll be putting this under review? Thank you. Good. Let me clarify that. It's not the limits that the Monetary Policy Committee will be uh, announcing in the coming weeks. The question uh, that your colleague answered before referred to the amount of the purchases that the central bank would undertake if the currency, if the peso, were to appreciate beyond the no intervention zone. Uh, both in December and in January, we limited the amount that we were willing to purchase of international reserves in that circumstance to $50 million per day, or up to $50 million per day, to be precise. Uh, and what I said is, in the event uh, the, the question was whether we would revise that and say, well, that's a monetary policy committee decision to make. Very well. Thank you so much. I think we have time for perhaps one more question, if there is from the audience a uh, question. Let's have a look. However, can I clarify something? Sure. However, l let me give you what is the uh, guiding principle that uh, we use to think about this issue. 
And, and the issue basically can be summarized in one word, which is to be very cautious. Uh, the central bank in Argentina, as we mentioned, is slowly revealed in its credibility. Part of doing so is being very prudent in not inserting pesos in the economy if we don't see that the demand for those pesos is there. And that guiding principle will continue to be in place. Very well. Thank you so much. Uh, I look to the floor for any uh, final questions. Otherwise, I will just ask uh, one more question myself for um, Minister Duhovne. Um, the, the theme of the meeting here, of course, is globalization 4.0, uh, the idea that we will have an increased globalization when it comes to the digital trade and, and digital economy, as well as, of course, an environmental globalization. Uh, is there any comment you can give from uh, Argentina's perspective on uh, this uh, new wave of globalization and Argentina's role in it? Well, basically, Argentina is uh, open its economy after many years of isolation in which uh, uh, it was banned to import some stuff, to export some type of uh, goods or services. And, uh, and what we are seeing is that Argentina is uh, uh, re-engaging in, into trade, uh, uh, introducing more import goods in, in, into our exports, facilitating the increase in, in productivity. And... Um, Another uh, issue that is very visible in Argentina is the explosion of the entrepreneurial activity uh, in, in value-added services, in, in innovation. We have a very, very well-qualified uh, um, population, uh, which is uh, really doing very, very interesting things uh, in terms of uh, innovation. And one of the sectors which is actually doing very well in Argentina is uh, the production and export of, of value-added services based in knowledge. So and, and we see that uh, employment in that sector is going up uh, very rapidly uh, in a sector in which there are no limits to trade. You know? right. So uh, that portrays and displays very well the impact that uh, being re-engaged with the rest of the world can uh, provide not only to this sector, but to all the economy. So we are very happy to, to see what is going on uh, with, with this. Okay, thank you very much. And on that note, I want to thank uh, you, Minister Dohovne, and of course, Governor Santleris, for your time and for being here with us in Davos. Y gracias también a todos los que ven en línea. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.